What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to create interactive Python plots inside of Jupyter Notebooks. And this is what it's going to look like in the end. We're going to have some sliders and we're going to have some drop down menus and we can adjust certain values and they're going to be uh, the plot is going to be plotted interactively. As you can see here, we can change the samples 500, for example, 1000, we can reduce the noise, we can increase the noise. And we're going to look at different graphs, right? We're not going to look at only this particular example here, we're going to learn how to create interactive plots in general in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so creating interactive Python plots inside of Jupyter Notebooks is actually quite simple. All we need to do is we need to have a function that does some plotting, some visualization, and this function takes some parameters. Those are the values that we can then tweak manually uh, or interactively. And then we take that function and make it interactive by um, using the IPy widgets module. And for that, we're going to start by importing the IPy widgets module. So we're going to say import IPy widgets stands for interactive Python widgets. And we're also going to import numpy as np and oh, numpy as np and matplotlib.pyplot splt. And of course, if you don't have those two installed on your system, you just type pip install numpy, pip install matplotlib in the command line. And the first example is going to be quite trivial. We're going to have some uh, function, so basic two times x function, and then we're going to yeah, add some noise and remove some noise interactively. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say x equals np random uniform 0, 5 and uh, size is going to be 100. And the y value is going to be essentially just two times x plus some noise and this noise is going to be np random normal distribution size 100. So standard normal distribution, and we can now add a weight here. So we can say w equals one. And this determines how much randomness we have. So those are the values, for example, and we can now say plt scatter x y and you can see that this is right now the function. Now if I change the weight to four, you can see that we have a lot more randomness. If I change this to 0 0.1, we almost have no randomness. So this is now something we want to pack into a function and make interactive. So we can just say plot underscore FCT for plot function, weight is going to be one by default. And then this is what happens with that weight. So now instead of saying plt scatter, and of course, I need to do the plt scatter x y inside of here. So the visualization needs to happen inside of the plot function. Um, and now if I say plot, function and then uh, one, I get that if I say zero, I get that if I say 10, I get this. Okay, so that's the basic idea. And now we can take that and make this interactive by saying ipy widgets dot interact. And we pass the plot function here as a first class entity. So without calling it, and then we specify w equals and we use a tuple to create a slider. So to say, from two with a step size off. So from zero to five, with a step size off, and then um, I don't know, 0 0.5, for example. And this now creates an interactive plot where we can just go ahead and slide and you can see that the data changes. Now, one thing that you're going to notice is that the data doesn't only change in the weights, it changes also because the randomness is inside of the function. What we can also do is we can take that x outside of the function because it's just a random generation. And we can also say noise equals np random normal size 100. And then we can replace this here with noise. Uh, the reason is that here now the randomness happens once and every time the function is executed, we just adjust the weight. So the randomness is not executed every time when we plot. So that would lead to something like this, the same function, but the weight changes, you can see now this is the same, those are the same points, but the weights uh, of the noise changes, right. Uh, and of course, we can also take this and make this more granular. So now we have 0 0.1. You can see how this works. Um, now it's going to be laggy, it's not because of the hardware, because I actually have quite a good computer. This is uh, just a software lagging, this is just Python lagging. So if you move this too fast, it just, uh, yeah, lacks a little bit. But you can see now how this works. If we put the randomness inside of the function, it's going to generate randomly every time. And of course, you can adjust these values. You can also have this to go to 100. So then 
you know, sooner or later, you basically have just nothing um, or no structure in here anymore. But yeah, that is how you do an interactive, simple plot. Now, let's go to the example that I showed you in the preview, we can save from sklearn dot data sets. And of course, for that, you would need sklearn. Um, we're going to import make moons, which is a function that creates sample data based on a certain structure. So make moons, and we can say moons equals make moons. And this function takes some parameters, for example, how many moons do we want to have, let's say 100. Uh, how much noise do we want to have, let's say 0 0.1. Uh, and yeah, basically, that's it. And then we can now say x and y equals moons zero and moons one, and then we can say plt scatter. And then we need to take from the x actually the coordinate. So zero is the x coordinate and one is the y coordinate. So y is actually just the label. So actually the color that we're going to use, So we're going to say c equals y. And then we get this moon structure. So that's the structure. This is the example that I showed you in the beginning. Um, so moon zero has all the coordinates, but they again are split into x and y coordinates and the y so moons one has just a label. So whether it's this class or this class, essentially. Uh, and we can also change this here now to 500. Then we can see a little bit more, we can change the noise to 0 0.4, then it's uh, quite noisy, we can change it to 0 0.01. And so on. So you can see it's almost perfect now. And this also can be made interactive. So we can say def plot moons. And then we want to have uh, samples going to be 200 by default, and the noise is going to be zero by default. And then instead of setting the values here, um, constantly, uh, or like in a constant way, we're going to pass the parameters. So samples and noise. And then the rest stays the same, actually. And then we say again, IPy widgets, interact, plot moons. And now what we can do here is we can say, okay, for the samples, we want to have a list. So not a tuple, this will give us a drop down menu. Now if we choose a list, um, and here we can just pass now 200 500 1000. And for the noise, we want to have a slider, we want to have a slider, it goes from zero to two with a step size of 0 0.025, for example. And then you can see now, I can adjust the noise, I can also change the samples. Now one thing that that is important is again, we have the randomness of the moon generation in here, if you want to have the same set of moon generation every time, you have to pass a random state being equal to something 50, for example, then you're going to always get the same moons, right? So you can see that there's no random generation happening. It's only the noise that is added. So the moons generated are always the same. If the random state is not set, we're going to get always different moons, right? So this is how you can play around with that. Um, then another thing that I want to show you here is you can also animate the sign function. So you can go ahead and say def plot underscore sign start is equal to zero. Um, and is equal to 30. Now I'm going to just directly write a function here so that you can see how this works. Factor is going to be one, I can also set the grid being equal to false and plot cosine is going to be um, also an additional thing that we can do here. And the basic idea is we say np lint space generate values from start to end with a step size of end minus start. Uh, not not step size uh, amount of elements generated end minus start times 10. And then we're going to say y is just np dot sign of x times the factor given in the function. And then we can say, plt grit is going to be grit. So true or false, depending on the parameter, and plt plot is going to plot x and y. And if plot cosine is active, we're also going to say y equals np cosine. And we're going to also plot plt plot x and y again with the cosine values. And now again, plt dot not plt, sorry, ipy widgets interact plot sign. And here we now have a bunch of parameters to pass. So for start, we're going to say again, from zero to 10, we're going to have a slider with step size one for end, we're going to have from 20 to 50 with step size one for the factor we're going to have from zero to five with a step size 0 
and the grid is going to be false by default. Um, yeah, that's that. So let's see, here you go. And you can see now I can adjust the range of this thing. I can also adjust the factor. Now this is only going to be visible if we also plot the cosine. So if I increase the factor, you can see it only increases the sine factor, not the cosine factor. I can plot the grid here. So this is interactive. You can see how this works. Kind of cool. And um, yeah. So then also I want to show you something that's kind of cool. We can also plot a sigmoid function, the sigmoid activation function for that. We're going to import math and we're going to say here now def plot underscore sigmoid and we're going to say x in equals zero. And the basic idea is we have the sigmoid function, we pass an x and then it's going to highlight that point at the sigmoid function. So we're going to say x equals np lin space negative 5 to 5, 1000 values, y is going to be 1 over 1 plus np exponent. So e to the power of negative x, that's just a sigmoid function. And y in is going to be for that particular value. So 1 over 1 plus math dot x. So e to the power of negative x in again, just a sigmoid function. And then we're going to plot x and y, we're going to scatter uh, x in y in, and we're going to do that in red. And then we're going to plot the line. So basically, if we do it just like that, let me show you what that looks like. Um, I pi widgets dot interact plot, uh, plot sigmoid. And um, I'm going to say x in is going to be equal to negative 5, 5, 0 0.1. What's the problem here? x is not defined. What x? Oh, this x. There you go. So that is the basic idea of this. But we want to also have a line. So we want to have a line going from here to here and from here to here to, to see that. And for that, we're going to just say uh, plt dot plot x in x in to zero y in. So basically, we have x one here, x two here, and then y one, y two here. And here we're going to say negative 5 x in and y in y in. <clears throat> so there you go. But of course, we want to have color being equal to red. There you go. And maybe actually we want to have r dash dash, not just the color. Like that. There you go. So that's also an animation we can do. And last but not least, let me show you here how to plot an interactive histogram. For that, we're going to say plot underscore hist. The mu is going to be zero by default. Sigma is going to be a one by default. And it's going to be 100, so 100 instances. We're going to have 10 bins by default. And the color is going to be blue by default. And we're just going to say plt x limit is going to be minus 20, 20, so that the plot doesn't adjust automatically, we're going to say x equals np random normal distribution given a mu and a sigma. So mean and the standard deviation with n instances and then just plot a histogram x with bins equal to bins and color equal to color. <clears throat> and then finally, we can just go ahead and say IPI widgets dot interact plot histogram and mu can be chosen from negative 10 to 10 with a step size 0 0.5 sigma can be chosen from 0 to 10 with 0 0.1 step size and can be 10 to 1000 step size 1 bins can be 1 to 100 step size 1 uh, what else do we have in a color for that we're going to specify a list so color is going to be red, green, blue. There you go. And now I can just pick some 
value for the mean. We can also increase the bins. We can also increase the amount of data and we can change the color. And one last thing that I want to show you for today's video is we can also <clears throat> call a function interact underscore manual. And that is the same thing, just that we can adjust the values and only when we're done, only when we have the values that we want, we can click on run interact and then it generates the histogram. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.